Now we're going to look at a new topic, vector fields. Vector fields have a lot of practical applications that I'll mention real quick before we look at the definition. And that is vector fields model motion of, say, air, fluids, force fields. So what a vector field does, it creates a picture that communicates a sense of movement. For example, if you look at a vector field, as we will in a minute, if the vector field is modeling the way the wind blows, then you should be able to feel how the wind is blowing just from looking at the vector field. You'll see examples. A vector field is a vector valued function on Rn, for us that's going to be R2 or R3, that takes each point in its domain and assigns a vector that you think of as attached to that point. So how we denote this if we're working say in R2 is we write vector valued function f of x and y is equal to an output which looks like a component function p on x and y, q on x and y. So these are vector valued functions like we've seen before with curves, but the difference here is that the function is of multiple variables, in particular to a point in R2, it associates a vector with two coordinates. Similarly, if we're working in three-dimensional space, our vector field would look like f of x, y, and z gives us a three-dimensional vector whose component functions would be p of x, y, and z, q of x, y, and z, and r of x, y, and z. So just like with previous vector-valued functions that we've seen, we can think of p and q or p, q, and r as coordinate functions or component functions, which associates to each point in D a coordinate. In other words, each component function is a scalar-valued function of multiple variables. The important thing here is the big picture. A vector field is a way of saying, at this point, here's an associated vector. So for the rest of this lecture, what we're going to do is visualize some of these vector fields. For our first example, let's look at the vector field f of x and y equals 1, 0. This is a vector field in R2. Its domain is the entire xy plane. And what this vector field says is to each point xy in R2, sketch the vector 1, 0. So we imagine going to each point in R2 and attaching a vector that looks like just go one coordinate to the east. So let me sketch a few of these. For example, if I come to the point 2, 0, I'm going to attach the vector 1, 0. If I come to the origin, I'm going to attach the vector 1, 0. Same thing, if I go left on the x-axis, to every point I associate the vector 1 unit to the right, 0 units up or down. And go up the y-axis. To each point on the y-axis I attach the same vector and you can see what we're going to do in the rest of space. At every point in the xy plane I imagine attaching the vector 1, 0. It's not a very interesting vector field, everybody looks the same. Now when I illustrated this vector field just now, I chose the points so that they're fairly spaced apart. And in fact, all of my xy coordinates here are grid points. But to every single point in R2, we associate the vector 1, 0. Which means if I just pick this point right here, not a whole number for x or y, I would draw the same vector. So if I wanted to be overly detailed, instead of just picking these four anchor points on the x-axis, I could try to fill in at every single point between, say, 0 and 1, just imagine drawing 1, 0 for every point there, or every point here, we would have a lot of overlap. So when we illustrate these by hand, or by using some numerical software, typically we don't draw our vectors as overlapping this much. We pick a nice set of points to illustrate the general behavior of the vector field. 
If I'm looking at this vector field, I get the overall picture. The picture is that this vector field points us to the right. If this were a map of wind or fluid flow, I would understand the behavior of the fluid. It's flowing evenly to the right. Okay, let's look at a few more examples. Suppose f of x and y is the vector field that takes any point x, y, and r2 and attaches the vector 0, y. Let's see what this vector field looks like by just plugging in some points. So how about we start with the origin? f of 0, 0 is 0, 0. So there's that vector. It has no magnitude. In fact, everywhere along the x-axis, because the y-coordinates along the x-axis are 0, to every point on the x-axis, we would associate the vector 0, 0. So for every point on the x-axis, I'm going to sketch this vector. And as I mentioned a second ago, we're not only interested in the vector at integer values of x, we could fill in the x-axis like this. But it's unnecessary to give this many examples, right? Once we see the trend behavior, we can go on to other regions in the xy plane. So what happens if I say go down to the third and fourth quadrant? The vector we attach to any point has no dependence on x. So every vector would point either north or south. There's no east-west component. It's just 0 in that first coordinate. And then how much it points north or south depends on the y-coordinate. So if I come down to y equals negative 1, every single vector is going to look like 0, negative 1. So to each point at the level y equals negative 1, I sketch the vector 0, negative 1. To every point x, y that has y equal to 1, I would sketch a vector that points one unit north. And then same story if y is negative 2, every point that has a y-coordinate of negative 2 is going to get the attached vector 0, negative 2. So we can fill in our vector field like this. Up here, y is 3. To every vector, we attach the vector 0, 3. So this is a picture of this vector field. Now imagine this vector field was modeling some motion. If I dropped a piece of confetti right here, what would happen? It would start to move up, and then we get the feeling maybe it's going to move up at a faster rate because the arrows get taller. So this is giving us our sense of motion. If I dropped a particle right on the x-axis, it wouldn't move at all. If I dropped a particle down here, it's going to flow down. OK, let's look at the vector field f of x and y equals 1 comma x. Start with the origin. f of 0, 0 is the vector 1, 0. Let me go down to the point 0, negative 1. The x-coordinate of 0, negative 1 is 0. So this vector will also be 1, 0. In fact, we see that up and down the y-axis, we're going to attach the vector 1, 0. OK, let's come over here to this point. 1, negative 1. The x-coordinate is 1. So at this point, I'm going to attach the vector 1, 1. 1 unit east, 1 unit north. And then if we go up and down again, we see that every coordinate that has an x-coordinate of 1 is going to get the same shape vector. 1 east, 1 north. We can draw a bunch of vectors like that. Go over to the other side. Let's say we're at the point negative 1, 0. The x-coordinate is negative 1, so this vector is going to be 1, negative 1. That's 1 unit east, 1 unit south. And then we can go up like this. OK, and we can fill in the rest of the plane like this just to give a sense of motion. Suppose this is modeling a fluid, and I drop an object right here. How would we expect that object to move based on this picture? Well, according to the vectors, it's going to go down a bit, but then once it gets here, it's going to go straight to the right, and then it's going to turn. So we can imagine a sense of motion built into this vector field. Same thing if I come down here. Again, we're going to go down, flow to the right, and then turn and flow up, kind of like that. 
This is a vector field I drew by hand. Again, when you draw a vector field by hand, you do the best you can to give an overall picture of the behavior of the vector field. Here's an image of this vector field produced in MATLAB. Using software can be a great way to generate a much larger picture of the vector field. Notice that while MATLAB is doing a great job with the sense of direction, the magnitudes of the vectors might not exactly match the magnitudes that we sketched by hand. And that's because it's common for software like this not to give necessarily the true magnitude of the vector at any point, but rather a relative sense of that vector's magnitude compared to the rest of the graph. So here the magnitudes are more relative to each other, kind of scale to give a good picture of the behavior of this vector field that's not too messy with too many overlapping vectors. So often when we generate a picture of a vector field, whether it's by hand or with a computer, sometimes we don't care too much about the magnitude of the vector because what's most important is the sense of direction. And you can imagine if you kept drawing vectors like this, they would become so long that they would overlap and make the picture kind of messy. Let's finish with these two examples. We just wanna sketch these vector fields in R2. The first vector field says, to any point x, y in R2, attach the vector, which is the y coordinate, comma, the y coordinate. So if we're at the origin, the y coordinate is zero. So we would attach the vector zero, just a point. And then we realize, oh wait, all along the x-axis, it's gonna be the same story because for every point on the x-axis, the y-coordinate is zero, so to every point on the x-axis, we attach the vector zero, zero. Okay, now imagine I'm at this point, negative three, one. The y-coordinate is one, so we attach the vector one, one. Similarly, if I'm at this coordinate, negative two, one, the y-coordinate is one, so once again, we attach one, one. And we see, wait, all along that line, whenever y equals one, we're going to attach the vector one, one. What about at negative three, negative one? The y coordinate is negative one, so we attach the vector negative one, negative one. And same story as we travel to the right, we keep attaching the vector negative one, negative one. Go up to y equals two. Any point that has a y coordinate of two, we'll get the vector two, two. So here I'm still paying attention to the magnitude. So I drew this vector to be truly two coordinates to the right, two coordinates up. Go down to any coordinate that has a y value of negative two, you get the vector negative two, negative two. So overall, this is enough to get a feeling for the flow of this vector field. Okay, let's look at f of x and y is y negative x. Start with the origin, that's gonna get zero, zero. Okay, this one is easy to get kind of twisted around, so let's go real slow. If I come to the point one, zero, I'm gonna switch their coordinates and negate the second one. So one, zero is gonna be zero, one. It's gonna be zero, negative one. Two, zero is gonna be zero, negative two. Let's go to the left. Negative one, zero, it's gonna be zero, negative one, negate that second coordinate, that's zero, one. Negative two, zero is going to be zero, two. Okay, let's go on the y-axis. Zero, one would be one, zero. Zero, two would be two, zero. Zero, negative one would be negative one, zero. And zero, negative two would be negative two, zero. Okay, let me pick a couple points which aren't on the axes. Okay, let's do this point, two, negative one. This one I'm gonna have to write down. So f of two, negative one, it's gonna take the y coordinate, so that's negative one, and then negate the x coordinate, so that's negative two. So this is going to point in the southwest, one unit west, two units south. What about this point here? That's one, negative two. That's gonna be negative two, negative one. So that's gonna point two units west, one unit south. This point here is negative two, negative one. So that's gonna be negative one, two. This point here is negative one, two. So that's gonna be two, one. Let's just do one, one. That's gonna be one, negative one. 
Okay, that's probably enough to get a feeling for this vector field. It seems to be revolving clockwise. Here's the vector field in MATLAB. You can really see the clockwise rotation. The vectors close to the origin have very small magnitudes. Those can be hard to make out. And once again, the magnitudes of the vectors pictured in this graph have been scaled relative to each other. All of the examples that I sketched in this lecture were vector fields in R2 because that's the ones that are most reasonable to sketch by hand, even reasonable to do with a computer. So here's a picture of a vector field in R3. So you can see why I didn't try to sketch one of these by hand. So typically we won't illustrate these concepts in R3 because the pictures are very messy, but conceptually understand that a vector field in R3 is going to take any point x, y, z in R3, any point in the domain of our function, and attach a vector, which of course is going to have three components, so some amount in the x direction, y direction, and z direction. So in particular, we could have something like a fluid volume, like a tank or a river, and we could model the direction of the fluid with a three-dimensional vector field. In this lecture, I just wanted to present the definition of a vector field and how to sketch them. We have a lot to look forward to with vector fields. Thank you for your attention.